Hi there, everyone. Ken here, your Thrifty Apprentice. Happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday the 13th of October, and we are in the middle of Inktober. Today's Inktober prompt is rise, and I decided I would draw some smoke sort of rising up from the flame of a candle. After I got the candle sketched in, I went in and started to work with my Darnassus 88-piece um, alcohol marker set. Um, now, the, the, let me stop right there and say that was a struggle in itself. I struggled with this piece not because of the piece, because for all intents and purposes, it was really simple. I struggled because of the markers themselves. And, of course, these are a set that I'm testing, and I said I would be testing throughout the month of October. Um, I've used them once in the background. I'm using them now on camera. I'm probably going to use them once more. But based on the experience that I've had with them so far, I'm going to be very honest. I'm not pleased with the performance of these alcohol markers at all. Um, there are a lot of issues that go along with them, but let me just get to the actual illustration and we'll talk about the markers at, in another video. So I took two sh shades of gray, two tones of gray, a, a cool gray seven and a cool gray nine is what I use to do the stand that the candle is standing on. The candle itself is based in with the color peach and the circle behind um, the candle was originally being shaded in with a color called Special Black, but that marker was dry immediately out of out of the pack. So um, I had to switch over to the regular black marker to finish shading that in. Now that circle is actually going to get bigger a little bit later on, but we'll come across that in just a second. Here, what I'm doing is I'm actually using the peach tone that I used on the candle in the holder that is standing on. Um, in order to lighten that alcohol marker, the cool gray seven and the cool gray nine honestly were a bit too dark or actually the cool gray seven was a bit too dark for the base. I should have went with like a cool gray five. So you're going to see me using like the colorless blender and the peach tone from the candle in the base in order to lighten those gray tones as I go. Um, and so I'm able to get the shading to form the shape that I would like. Now, the melted wax that's on the candles, I originally started out shading in um, the area under that wax and the color variation in the candle, excuse me, with cool gray markers. Um, but peach and cool gray didn't go together well. It looked really ashy. I should have known better, but I was so frustrated with using the markers. With that said, eventually I switched over to warm gray. I'm going to be using a warm gray one to do the shading in the candle and under the melted wax that's coming down. You're going to see me go back and forth and put a couple of coats of black on the circle in the background simply because um, I had a lot of skipping and a lot of the areas just was streaking. So it took two or three coats to really get it solid. And then, of course, I'm going to have to repeat that when I go back and enlarge the circle because I wanted to give more of a circumference for the smoke that's going to be rising from the flame. And then, too, if you pay attention to the far lower left side of that circle, uh, yeah, I was kind of out of whack. I, it wasn't a circle. It had a little bump there, so I had to go in and fix all of that. Now, what you see me doing here is changing that cool gray over to warm gray. And it worked so much better. Um, the undertones worked so much better together. Um, I started to make some leeway with it. For a minute, this illustration really was in the hot mess phase. Um, mainly because of my struggle with the uh, utensils. or I'm saying utensils with the product that I was using. Um, but I persevered through. And eventually, I am going to come out with a composition that I was okay with actually sharing with you guys. I'm uh, going to tell you now, this will end up having some color pencils on top. I'm going to use both Prismacolor as well as some Dorwent Chromaflow um, eventually to really pull this all together. Now, I'm, the highest highlight will only be done with a white color pencil. So I didn't use any bleed proof of anything or, or anything of that nature. I'm sorry, um, on the composition. Now, I finally got the candle stand to a point where I wanted it. And here I'm going in and blending in some more of that black 
uh, simply because I had to catch the rest of that circle up to what I had already done. Once I was satisfied with all of that, I'm jumping in with a couple different tones of oranges. Um, a warm orange, a cooler orange, or a lighter tone, a uh, solid yellow, and I'm using it to base in the flame and just get it the way I want to. At this point, I've jumped over to color pencil, so it did become a little bit of a mixed media project, but still inky. All ink for ink tints. Uh, all ink for intense. <laughs> all ink for ink sober. Oh yeah, I'm still uh, going a little crazy from those markers. I used some light blue tones and some regular blue tones to start putting in the smoke rising from the actual candle flame, um, just so we could make sure to incorporate the prompt for today. And afterwards, I'm going to highlight everything. That's really going to bring it to an end. Hopefully you guys saw something you liked. It was a struggle for me. It was a really quick video. I was really frustrated. Um, but hopefully you guys will join me back here next time. If you saw anything you liked, don't forget to hit, hit that thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new or if you're returning and you haven't subscribed. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when all the new content comes out. You can check out the video description for all of the relevant links, the Facebook group, Etsy and Patreon if you want to support. And remember, as I always tell you, just keep painting and crafting.